Hi everyone, I'm Kevin, and today we're going to learn how to identify metabolic acidosis on our arterial blood gas test, or ABG. I know this is a complicated topic, but I'll try to make it as simple as possible for all of you. Are you ready? Alright. So imagine you're the primary care physician at a local hospital. When a mother brings his 16-year-old son after finding him talking nonsense in his room, she also noticed that he has been thirsty and breathing really fast. She tells you her son was diagnosed with diabetes when he was 12, and that lately he has been reluctant to using insulin when going to school. You suspect a diabetic ketoacidosis, so you order a biochemistry and an ABG test. The result shows a glucose level of 507, a pH of 7.2, a partial pressure of CO2 of 31, and a bicarbonate level of 15. I know these are a lot of values, but what do you think they mean? When our bodies experience hyperglycemia due to insulin deficiency, like in this case, our bodies will start producing ketone bodies as a byproduct of compensating lipolysis to produce energy. These ketone bodies are essentially acids, and they will decrease our bicarbonate level, which is a base in our blood, resulting in a metabolic acidosis with an increased anion gap. We have half of the case resolved already, but how do you identify this metabolic acidosis when reading an ABG? I like to break the ABG into three steps. First step is to look at the pH. Recall normal values for pH go from 7.35 to 7.45. Lower values indicate acidosis and higher values indicate alkalosis. Our patient has a pH of 7.2, which is low, and therefore indicates acidosis. But at this point, we don't know if the cause of this acidosis is metabolic or respiratory. So that brings us to our second step, which is to look at the bicarbonate level. Our patient has a bicarbonate level of 15, which is low. Remember the bicarbonate normal values go from 22 to 26. Low bicarbonate level, along with a low pH, like in our patient, indicates a metabolic acidosis. So now we just need to check if there's a secondary acid-base disorder happening at the same time. And what I mean is that you can have a metabolic acidosis combined with a metabolic alkalosis or combined with a respiratory acidosis and if so, your treatment approach will change. Are you following me? So for a third step, we're going to check if there's a secondary acid-base disorder by determining if there's an appropriate compensation to our patient metabolic acidosis. So if we look at our patient, we will notice his respiratory rate is high. And this is a compensating mechanism because our body senses that we have a low pH, so we start to hyperventilate to blow off CO2, which is an acid. All of this in a try to raise our pH, not to normal level, because compensating mechanism cannot bring our pH to a normal level. So looking at the pCO2 is our third step. Our patient has a pCO2 of 31, and recall pCO2 normal values go from 35 to 45. Therefore, our patient has a low pCO2, which indicate there's a respiratory compensation to his metabolic acidosis. Remember, this is a very dynamic topic, so values might indicate mixed disorders that go beyond this video. We can review other acid-based disorders in other videos. I know it's a lot, but I hope today you have learned how to identify metabolic acidosis when reading an ABG. Please share this video with your friends if you find it helpful. And feel free to ask your questions in the comments. I'll be happy to answer. See you next time.